In this movie, we're going to talk about refining our layout to make it more precise. Now, generally speaking in Revit, what you typically do is you lay out elements very roughly at first in the approximate locations, and then you come back and refine their positions to make them more precise. I like to call this sketch then modify. So we're going to sketch out the shape that we want and then come back and using a variety of techniques, modify the placement of those elements to refine them and make it a more precise layout. In this example, we're going to use the grids that we laid out in the previous movie. And the first technique that I want to show you to do this progressive refinement or this sketching and modifying is temporary dimensions. Now, temporary dimensions are so called because when you select an element on screen, and I'm going to select grid A here as an example, you will see a series of dimensions appear referencing that element to other nearby geometry. So in this case, the two dimensions that appear are down here towards the bottom, and we have one dimension here to the left measuring back to this wall, and another dimension over here to the right measuring back to this wall. Now, if I knew what distance I wanted that to actually be, I can click right on the number and it will activate that number and allow me to input a new value. Now, in this case, you can see that the value is very random. What I want to do is make it something a lot more precise. So I'm going to put in 8, but I don't want to put 8 and press Enter because that would be 8 feet. In an imperial file, if you want 8 inches, you need to do 8 and then either the inch symbol or there's another alternative way that I'll show you in a moment. So when I do 8 inches, it now moves that grid A over closer to the wall on the left. I'm going to change my selection to grid B and notice that it's got two dimensions as well, similar to grid A, and I'm going to click on the smaller dimension, the one off to the right, and I'm going to repeat the process. Now, the way I came up with 8 with grid A was I started with the notion of this wall. And if you highlight it, you'll see that it's a 12 inch generic wall. So I started with that 12 inches and I paid attention to these small little grip points here, these witness line grips on the dimension. And I noted that it was right down the center of that wall. So half of that wall was six inches and then I wanted it two inches further from that. So that's how I came up with eight. Let's say that you don't want to do the math. You want to just measure directly from the face of the wall instead. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to roll my wheel, select that grid again, and notice that if you click right on that witness line grip, it will jump to the face of the wall. If you click it a second time, it'll jump to the outside face, and then one more time, it'll go back to center. So what we want to do is click it to go to the inside face, and then I can click right on the dimension to activate the number and type in the value I want, which in this case is going to be 2 inches. Now, let me show you an alternative way to do it. I could do 2 in the inch symbol, or I can do 0 space 2. So in an imperial file, when you're working in imperial units, the first number is the feet, then a space, and the second number is the inches. And when I press Enter, that grid will move over to make that distance two inches. Now, another thing that's important to state here that's hopefully fairly obvious from the way things are behaving on screen is whatever you have selected is what's going to actually move or modify when you manipulate the dimensions. So in this case, we're moving stuff using the temporary dimensions. So whatever grid I have selected is the one that's actually going to move. So if I click over here on grid C, Sometimes the dimensions are a little bit further away. Notice the dimension is way down here. I'll click my witness line. It goes to the inside face, and I'll click right on that number to inch symbol, enter. It's grid C that moves. I'll select grid 4, click the little witness line grip to get it to go to the inside face. Click on that number, 0, space, 2, enter. Notice that it's grid 4 that moves. And then one more is grid E, 0, space, 2. We have one more here, grid 1, 2 inches. And that takes care of all the ones that are related to an exterior wall. But we have one more right here, grid D, that I want to talk about. Notice that the temporary dimensions are referencing to the exterior walls. So in this case, it's 24 feet off of this wall right here. If I click the witness lines, it goes to the face of the wall, 
and the face of the wall and the center of the wall, but it would not jump over to the other grid. So another way that you can work with the temporary dimensions is you can actually grab hold of that little witness line grip right there and start to drag it. And when you do, you've sort of picked it up and then you can highlight some other object like grid B or grid C. And in this case, I know the distance off of grid C. So I'm going to drop it when it's highlighting grid C and notice that it now associates with grid C instead of the wall. Then I'll click in here and I want it to be 31 space 8. Okay, so that's 31 foot 8 inches and I'll press enter. And again, grid D will move. So when manipulating your layout, the easiest and most immediate way to do it is to first rough out the sketch in approximate locations, then come back and select the elements, locate an appropriate temporary dimension, modify the witness lines if necessary, and then activate the number and type in the value you want. When working an imperial file, remember that you can do feet and inches with the foot symbol and the inch symbol, or by just simply separating the two with a space. And then this process of sketching and modifying or progressively refining is how we typically do a layout in Revit.